Good morning. It's great to be here. Um, I promise I'm not going to try and show any Rubik's Cube that you are uh, doing this presentation. <laughs> Um, my name is Matthew Green, and I'm a project manager at Arctic. Um When designing an API, we often think the first release is going to be perfect, uh, but if, in reality, it turns out API is more API design is more an iterative process where you learn from your mistakes, and that's why I'm here today uh, to talk to you about some of the success and mistakes uh, we've made during our major three iterations of Arte. <coughs> For those who don't know Arte, Arte is a French and German TV network uh, that broadcasts its content most over Europe in French and German. And we specialize in cultural content, so classic movies, documentaries, European TV series, and so on. Our online catalog is pretty big, so we have over 12,000 titles. Uh, we also have some content that is available in additional languages with subtitles. And the best thing about the catalog is it's free to use, no subscription, so hope you go check it out. At Arte, during the last, um, during the last few years, uh, we really had many devices that appeared in the market and we had to ship our content to those devices. So it was really a big digital transformation for us. Uh, and our main focus, this is what we, why we do what we do with APIs, is just to build great apps. Apps that are fast, apps that have rich content. Um, that's our main focus. So let's take a back and take a, a moment to reflect on how things worked before APIs. Because before APIs, um, we use the giant CMS. This made everyone <coughs> really happy because they could edit any web page. So we were really happy, but it just didn't work out. We had no design coherence whatsoever. Um, our content was randomly structured, so it worked well for web, but for apps, uh, like mobile apps, TV apps, we couldn't reuse the data. Uh, we had to cope with a huge archive, so the site was getting slower and slower over time. And it was just really costly and impossible to maintain or upload. So before APIs, every time we wanted to make a new app, we had to build a new data interface. So you can imagine this is not very efficient. And of course, uh, this was slowing app development down. So we had to choose the, the platforms where we would like to make um, an app. We could not make apps for every platform, it was just too costly. And the apps pretty much provided basic functionalities like replay. And they were rarely updated because we rarely updated the data interface that was uh, associated. So our first API, the theory was let's dump the CMS. This was a very hard decision for us because we had a huge archive. But as the data was not structured, there was like no way um, we would keep it. And we used our broadcast tool, which is called Appius, and it has some structured data that is stored into an Oracle database. We built the REST API. The idea is that it communicates um, with Appius to get the data. And every time we make a new app, we just reuse the existing uh, data interface. So our first iteration, the objective is to build great apps uh, and accelerate app development. So the idea is to expose the first REST API with data structured in JSON, um, and also to try and reduce the amount of uh, errors uh, due to our complex data model. So we try to simplify our data model, uh, just to have programs, videos, shows, TV series, and uh, ship very uh, easy to understand that among. So our first iteration was born in 2012. Um, it was called Papi. Um, some things really work well. Uh, APIs, uh, developer were thrilled to have an API. They were uh, so happy because uh, back at the time, APIs were pretty rare. Um, the structure content really made a difference for us because we can now make powerful apps on all of our devices. 
Um, this really sped up our application development as well because um, uh, now we could basically, we had more time uh, so we could make more apps. And in fairness, it worked so well uh, that we wanted to extend our use because we only, only used our first uh, iteration internally. We wanted to make it, to extend our use to external partners. Um, of course, there were a few limitations. Um, so the documentation was a nightmare. We had to write it down in the wiki. Um, it was just so complicated. Um, we had catalog restrictions. We only had a portion of our catalog. We didn't have our complete uh, video library. Um, and our catalog was not re very frequently up to date. So when an editor edited a new program or changed a title, or it would take maybe four or five hours to be online. So this was not really acceptable. Um, and basically the strategy that one API would do everything, well, didn't really work out. Because we started to have a huge API, uh, it was just complicated to manage. Um, the development process was pretty slow. And of course we had some other improvements to make, like uh, security and um, because we only had for internal use, we were using HTTP. We also used a strategy to reduce the file size of the JSON attribute names. Um, the idea was to make attribute names very short using three letter codes. Uh, this was, uh, as you can imagine, really bad. <laughs> um, using JSON compression, it just there's just no point of doing it. Um, for the understanding of the API, it was a nightmare. So this is a much better approach. <laughs> Try and work on good naming. And it's just the best form of documentation. Okay. Just using right attribute names. So how can we improve on the first version? We have a few ideas. Um, first was split our big API into smaller API chunks uh, that were easier to manage. But by doing so, every API had to kind of support um, all those blocks, like TLS, content, uh, authorization, sorry, throttling and cache. So um, we tried and built an API proxy that would take care of all of this. So basically, API, uh, API developers will only co concentrate on their core API. Um, UTRE was also build a developer portal because we were fed up of writing the documentation in the wiki. Um, and it was just complicated to give access to the documentation. So the idea is every API should expose its documentation uh, with a Swagger or Open API. And the developer portal will just display the documentation. Um, and of course, the developer would need to create an account, uh, access the sandbox, and so on. Um, but this was pretty new in 2012, and there were no um, really renowned market tools doing it. Um, and of course we need uh, some sort of uh, administration console where we can manage users and so on. Our, so our, the objective for our second version was basically to improve our catalog, to have our complete video catalog in the API. Um, and to improve the, the time it made between an update from an editor to the, sh the shipping in production. Um, we wanted to make it even easier for developers, um, so access to, to the developer portal. Uh, we tried to use a standard uh, JSON API. At the time, JSON API was, not, uh, was still in beta, uh, so we're not fully JSON API 1.0 compliant. Um, we also wanted to support versioning so that we could make breaking changes uh, without destroying any existing apps. And we would try to industrialize the, um, the making of new smaller APIs by um, auto generating documentation based on adaptation, uh, code annotations. Um, um, we would be able, we would need to be able to monitor what is going on. Because when you give access to a, a developer portal, uh, basically APIs use, uh, developers use your APIs and they can do anything they want. So we had to uh, get our logs 
and we want to put our logs into a, a log stack uh, and be able to see what's going on with our API. We would also like to improve security and find new API users. So by the end of 2014, we had a new stack of API. So we have three small blocks. One main data API, player API dedicated for the player, and an OAT API that would handle the OAT and the hosting of uh, the developer model. So here we have a few examples of a, a screenshot of what the developer portal looks like. So basically you have access to documentation, all the endpoints on the left, the sandbox, the, re the results. Uh, you could like make calls to embed videos. Um, and of course we had some sort of uh, uh, administration portal where we could uh, create apps, validate accounts, and so on. So what really worked was, um, yeah, catalog worked well, developer portal was awesome, um, generating the documentation automatically based on code, lifesaver. Um, we could start making new usage for with our APIs. Um, we also use a dedicated image resizing server, um, which helped us to deliver uh, really the, the image that is required for every device. This really improved performance, um, so that was, that was pretty good. And the monitoring stack was really impressive because we used it to monitor um, uh, the understanding of our, our client's requests. Uh, we could detect API abuse. Um, so this is something we really uh, look at uh, every day. Uh, of course, there were a few limitations. Um, we tried to use JSON API. This worked very well. Uh, but developers were finding it hard, hard to understand the linking system. Um, so we tried not to use it in further versions. Um, we also um, adapted our content based on user roles. So for example, the app A had the role to get teasers, but the, the app B B didn't get this role, uh, so this led to poor cache performance. Um, but the main issue here was that um, we had problems because on each of our devices we had different content that displayed. For example, the list of most viewed videos on our iOS device and on our Android device and our website was not the same. But the videos are the same. But it turned out that every API call was slightly different because there were so many parameters and at the time we had really technical driven endpoints so it, they would be prone to error um, so it was pretty bad. Uh, we never used uh, versioning for minor version because we never break, make any breaking changes in minor versions. We only add stuff. We never break anything so uh, we're not really using it. Um, Another thing we learn is the power of the sandbox. Uh, once you get a developer portal working, basically developers, they never ask any questions. <coughs> to totally go freestyle. And uh, uh, that was very good. We had our stack for logs that we could monitor what was going on because uh, it was so bad. <laughs> so you no longer fully control the use of your API. <laughs> Um, we also discovered that APIs do not work well for every partnership. Um, I built a small graph to explain this. Basically, it depends on the level of technology of your partner and the, the interest he has in working with you. So basically, if he has a lot of interest in working with you and he has a lot of tech knowledge, he's going to use your API. It's going to be great. But you have also, if you're working with Google, um, Maybe they don't have so much interest in working with you. They have a lot of technology, but you're probably going to use Google's API for this. And for other partners where technology is not good, um, it's probably best in some use case to stick to XML, RSS feeds. It also works well. So what can we improve in a third iteration? 
To display a single page, an app had to make 10, 15, 20 API calls. So this was slow. This was also prone to error because every API call had to be very specific. Um, so the idea would be to create a middleware um, that would combine all those calls in, a, in kind of a philosophy of one page, one call. So this would guarantee that um, we would display the same content on all of our devices. So on, our, on our websites, our most viewed videos would be the same as our, on our uh, apps. Um, also, the middleware can evolve very quickly with your front-end needs. So when you have front-end changes, it's very easy uh, to adapt. But your core API with your data model, it doesn't change often. It pretty much stays uh, um, the same. Uh, you add some features with your objects, their, your videos, your programs, they're going to stay programs and videos. So third iteration, we want one page, one call philosophy. And we also want functional driven endpoints because there were so many errors, <coughs> technical uh, endpoints where you could uh, pass 20 query parameters to filter um, and so on. So we tried and make functional driven endpoints, for example, to get the list of most viewed videos and so on. So API, the third version was born late 2017. Uh, this really worked well. Philosophy worked well. Uh, it improved speed, <coughs> reduced errors. Um, we would now display the same content on all apps. What did not work well was um, that's a graph of basically our API usage. Uh, and as you can see, we're still pretty much relying on pure internal use. Um, direct external use is only about 10% of, of our traffic. Um, so we hope to improve this in the future. Of course, we have uh, some future challenges. Uh, as we're using a NoSQL database, it's very hard for us to keep the data in sync. So, for example, when we have a relationship between different objects, it's hard to keep them in sync. Uh, so, in our future releases, we'll probably try and switch our main uh, database to uh, an SQL database. Uh, we'll try and improve our cache heat rate um, <coughs> by basing ourselves on cache preloading. Um, and also, our, one of our main struggles is that we have old version of the text and it's so hard to duplicate them, so hard to stop them, because those apps are still, those APIs are still making video views, they're still publishing our content, so it's hard to say, no, now we stop this API. Because when we keep all the APIs, we're just losing velocity, um, and this is just, it's not, just not good for, for our business. So in conclusion, um, of course API, your first API is not going to be perfect. Um, for your first version, you concentrate on an MVP, it's, it's more than enough. Uh, admit your failures early so that you can work on it, uh, make a second iteration and so on. Um, choosing ex extending over versioning um, is much better uh, for our Euro case anyway. Um, and functionally driven endpoints uh, really make it easier for developers <coughs> to get the data they need without thinking about how the request should look like. A uh, few limitations, um, APIs are not for everyone, I love APIs, know when to use an API, know when to use standard uh, RSS feeds or um, something old style, it also works. Um, and keep in mind that an API is, is, an API, is a, a temporary contract, so for example our API lifecycle is about three years. Um, uh, you have to take this into account because if you share your API with partners and, it, and they expect their app to be able to work for five years, then you have a big problem. So <coughs> you should take this into account very soon. You can build the best API in the world if your data is not good and not structured properly, you will not make a great app. So maybe it's best if you take time to work on your data well, work on the structure of your data before working on 
the API itself. <coughs> the importance of a good documentation, the best documentation is the attributes, the name of the resources, so take time to basically name stuff, discuss it with your team, see how the competition is doing. Um, we have a lot of conventions, so stick, try and stick to conventions. Uh, generating the documentation based on the code is just amazing because you always have a doc that is up to date. You also make uh, the de developers aware of the documentation and it's also <coughs> of their responsibility to keep it up to date, to keep the annotations up to date and so on. Be careful when you publish a developer portal and you publish a sandbox, basically you lose control over your API. So make sure you have a way to monitor what is going on. And consider using an API middleware. Um, there are some endpoints that are really close to your front-end needs because your front-end needs evolve very quickly, so you have to adapt and try and keep your APIs really oriented to your core data model um, because your objects will never change uh, that often. So I'd like to thank you all, and before I take any questions, I'd like to thank the organizers of these amazing events, all the team that worked on the API management, and here's a few bonus uh, where you have a few uh, stats on the number of requests you make, the architecture, uh, and then of course I'll be available to discuss this uh, later if you have any questions. Thank you. Thank you.